Make sure I have the right mic turned on for me. Oh yeah, here we go. <clears throat> testing one, two, testing. How's that? Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. Sound and video are both on. I just realized I wasn't listening to anything you just said. What you didn't say anything besides te check the sound, right? I just said you're good to go. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh my God, everybody. So here's where you can see me out there on the road again. All tickets, jenkirkman.com, click tour. If you're listening to this and I'm getting to a bunch of cities and you're like, how do I see her again? Rewind, jenkirkman.com, click tour. March 28th, one night only, 7 p.m. in Phoenix, back at CB Live. The hilarious Tony Tripoli is my opening act. I will not be anywhere else in Arizona this year, so make it a special trip. I would like to sell it out. We've sold about 150 in advance, 150 more to go. Maybe by the time this episode comes out, we've sold a little more. So I would not wait to get them at the door. Please do buy them now. And then I will be in New York City, May 7th through 9th, Mother's Day weekend. Five shows at Caroline's Comedy Club on Broadway. I'm real excited about this. So come on down, say hello. But not only say hello, buy tickets, buy them now. And then June 4th through 6th, it's my debut at the Spokane Comedy Club in Spokane, Washington. Please come on down July back in Dallas, one of the biggest supportive places that I go every year, July 10th and 11th at Hyenas Comedy Club. I will not be in any other of my usual stops in Texas this year. I only have time to be one place. So I picked Dallas because that's where my biggest fan base is there. Yeehaw, come see me. All tickets available at jenkirkman.com. Click tour. And we'll also be hitting Winnipeg, Canada in August, Buffalo, New York in September, Bloomington, Indiana in September, Seattle and Portland in November. JenKirkman.com, click Kirk Mail, and you will get an email the minute that tickets go on sale. And March 24th is my interview show, Real Talk with Jen Kirkman at the Hollywood Improv, where I have a one-hour, very honest conversation with a fun, famous, funny person. This month it is the... Fabulous Julia Sweeney. So get tickets, jankirkman.com, click tour. Those are on sale right now. Only seats 50. Tickets are 15 bucks. Uh, probably going to sell out at the door, so I'd get them now. All right, enjoy this week's episode. Oh my God. Episode 327, having funlessness with Jen Kirkman. Whew. This episode is sponsored by Rothy's and Etitude. We will get to that later. Thank you for being sponsors. Everybody, the Patreon is here. Ooh, ooh. It's been here for a while, but in case you don't know about it, you can go to patreon.com and you can search Jen Kirkman. It's that easy. Find a creator. But you can also go to the Instagram page at Jen Kirkman Podcast or Having Funlessness, which is on Twitter at Having Funlessness. Um, nope, it's not. It's Twitter at Funlessness Pod. I will never get that right. And in the link in the bio of all those places is where you can click the link to go straight to the Patreon page or go to my website, jenkirkman.com, click podcast, and there you will see how to become a Patreon. So we've got all kinds of levels for you. Level three, you get nothing but my love. Just give me some money. Level five, uh, level one, I, the next level, five bucks. You get the video feed of this podcast, which is unedited, so you get to see and hear all my gaffes. And a bonus 20-minute episode once a month where I talk about something from pop culture that's in the news. $10 a month, bonus interview, a bonus interview episode every month. That is both video and audio. You get two bonus 20-minute episodes, obviously the live video feed, and an exclusive Having Fun Listens with Jen Kirkman vinyl sticker that you can't get anywhere else, $20, three bonus 20-minute episodes, plus the live video feed, plus the bonus one-hour interview a month, and an exclusive I Seem Fun mug, or I'm Fun mug, sorry, it doesn't say I Seem Fun, and $25 a month, you get those four weekly 20-minute episodes, and a special Having Fun Listeners with Jen Kirkman poster, that's a good one, it's a picture of me, it's really cool, uh, and you also get from previous tiers, the video version, and the bonus interview podcast. And for $50 a month, you get all of the bonus content in the previous tiers. Your merch is that you get an I'm Fun stick figure t-shirt and two free tickets to any of my live shows for yourself, or you can give them away as gifts. And at the show, you will get, if I have any free merch to give you or a book and VIP, you get to meet me after the show. 
So that's 50 bucks a month. Obviously that's a good option for people who live in any of the cities that I'll be performing in this year. So there's that. Um, I'm really excited. I hope a lot of you sign up. It's a lot of work and I will pull the plug on it if not enough people sign up. How's that? All right, this week, woo, 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 we're gonna talk about what I didn't talk about last week, which is that some people don't have an internal monologue. I don't fucking get that at all. Um, my rotator cuff is, well, it might not be fucked up by the time you hear this, but it was fucked up. Uh, the live video feed people are gonna see, ah, 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 ah. oh, it's a lot better. Um, and I did it with acupuncture. Oh my God, this annoying person one time was like, well, I don't believe in acupuncture. I was like, I don't give a fuck what you believe in. I'm telling you a story. Um, and we'll read some listener emails. So let's begin. So I'm reading this article here. Uh, I don't know how it came up in my life, but um, it's from a website called Inside My Mind. Not everyone has an intern. I must have seen this link come across social media or something. And uh, this guy, Ryan, wrote an article called, Today I Learned That Not Everyone Has an Internal Monologue and It Has Ruined My Day. So I don't know if this is just like a blog or whatever. It doesn't really matter. So he writes, my day was completely ruined yesterday when I stumbled upon a fun fact that absolutely obliterated my mind. I saw this tweet yesterday that said that not everyone has an internal monologue in their head. All my life, I could hear my voice in my head and speak in full sentences as if I was talking out loud. I thought everyone experienced this, so I did not believe that it could be true at that time. Literally, the first person I asked was a classmate of mine who said that she cannot hear her voice in her mind. I asked her if she could have a conversation with herself in her head, and she looked at me funny like I was the weird one in this situation. So I began to become more intrigued. Most people I asked said that they have this internal monologue that is running rampant throughout the day. However, once in a while, someone would say they don't experience this. My life began to slowly spiral out of control with millions of questions. How do they get through the day? How do they read? How do they make decisions between choice A and choice B? My friend described it as concept maps that she sees in her brain. Another friend says that she literally sees the words in her head as if she's trying to think about something. I was taking ibuprofen at this point, ibuprofen at this point in the day because my brain was literally unable to comprehend this revelation. How have I made it 25 years in life without realizing that people don't think like me. I posted a poll on Instagram to get a more accurate assessment of the situation. Currently, 91 people have responded that they have an internal monologue and 18 people reported that they do not have this. I began asking those people questions about the things that they experience and it is quite different from the majority. I would tell them that I could look at myself in the mirror and have a full-blown telepathic conversation with myself without opening my mouth, and they responded as if I had schizophrenia. One person even mentioned that when they do voiceovers in movies of people thought, no, one person even said, you know, when they do voiceovers in movies of, people thought, of people's thoughts, they wished it was real. To their surprise, they did not know that the majority of people do in fact experience that echoey voice in their head that is portrayed in TV and film. Another person said that if they tried to have a conversation with themselves in the mirror, they would have to speak out loud because they can't physically do it inside of their mind. I am blown away by this. I didn't know it was possible. This is me, Jen. Not, this is not the article now. Okay, back to the article. How do they think? How does this affect their relationships, jobs, experiences, education? How has this not been mentioned to me before? All of these questions started flooding my mind. Can these people without the internal monologue even formulate these questions in their mind? If they can, how does it happen if they don't hear their voice? I mentioned earlier that I was spiraling out of control. Well, as I write this and as I hear my own voice in my head, I'm continuing to fall down the rabbit hole. Now, this is interesting. This is Jen now. I might think something, but I, I, 
I don't hear my own voice saying it. So if I'm at work and somebody's saying, well, what if in this episode she walks down the street? And I'm thinking, yeah, but she walked down the street in episode two. And this isn't a show about a woman who walks down the street. So maybe I'll pitch um, that she gets a cab. You know, but whatever I just said is, it's, it's in a monologue, but it's not necessarily my voice. It's just thoughts. I don't know how to explain it. But then there's the internal monologue that I allow myself to do where I'm, having fantasy conversations in my head where I'm, you know, good things are happening or bad things. So anyway, um, whether people just have different definitions of their thoughts or if people literally don't have an internal monologue, there is one thing that we do know. You will get a headache if you keep talking about this. Just trying to wrap my head around it is causing irreversible brain damage. I suggest asking people around you what they experience. If you are one of the few that do not have this internal monologue, Please enlighten me because I do not understand life anymore. Send help. So I feel the same way. Um, if you don't have an internal monologue and you're like, oh, yeah, I, that's email me. I seem fun at gmail.com. I want to know all about it. It sounds like it could be a peaceful way to live because I'm always having conversations in my head. You know, um, like sometimes I will just like I'll give you an example. I'll be like, oh, I'm going on the road next week. I forgot to, you know, or this club doesn't let me pick my own opening act. So it's going to be some guy in the green room, and he's probably going to be this, like, Bernie bro that's just like, why do, you, why do you want everyone without healthcare to die? Or some weird argument handed to him by Russian propaganda, and I'll be backstage like, I want people to have healthcare. It's a strategic thing. He does not know how to get stuff done. You're caught up in a fucking populist movement it's not real like you know and I'm gonna go no see that's not gonna be enough for him there's nothing I can say can't argue back with him and then he's gonna sit there and go well you're corporate and I'm gonna go listen dude I rent I had two Netflix specials and the money from them is gone not because it was that much money or I blew it it just that's what happens when you pay bills and have a manager and an agent and a lawyer over years like and they take a percentage and that's like called life. I, I, I earned a living. He's a millionaire with three houses. Like these are things that go on in my head. Not always about Bernie Sanders, but it's just like the one example where if I'm nervous that I might be in a situation where there could be an argument, I, I, I run through and, and I'm not argumentative. So I am online and stuff, but like in real life, um, I'm not going to yell at you about something like I'm, I'm like, keep the peace, people pleasing. I don't like negativity, uh, not in a psychotic way, but so, um, oh, I have a good story. I have a gossipy story that I can't tell you the celebrity's name, but, um, so yeah, it's like, I, you know, so I would always just sit back. I usually just say nothing. Like I don't defend my position at all because you can tell when you're talking to someone who's, I don't try to convince people they think differently, but even sometimes in discussing what my own views are the person will argue them. They don't want to hear yours. And I don't need, I don't feel the need to say mine. It doesn't make me feel better. Like I've stood up for myself. So a lot of times I'm just like, I don't want to talk about this. And then I'm quiet. <laughs> so, um, it, it's weird that I run these internal practice monologues in my head or dialogues really, because I will never do them. Um, so there you go. I don't know what else to say about that. But yeah, it, it just blew my mind because I'm always, there's always something going on. There's never quiet in my head. And it's not unpleasant. It's just, I'm kind of talking to myself in my head all the time or thinking, oh, I can't wait to tell this person about this. And then instead of just thinking, tell them about this book, I'll just picture us having the conversation. And it just plays out like a little play in my head. And it's like kind of just like, like running in the background, you know, but I can interrupt it and go, now I'm going to listen to a song on the radio and sing along to it. it. And it might not even be a constant internal monologue, but maybe it's more like a constant fantasy life in my head. So if I'm singing a song I really like in the car, I might be like, is there a world where I would ever sing this on stage for any reason? Like, what if I do this gig at, I don't know, let's say I do a gig at Largo and there's like a musician there who's like, I need someone that knows all the lyrics to this um, and who can play piano. And then I'm like, okay, but Jen, you don't play piano anymore. You forgot how. You've tried to sit down at one recently and nothing came out, but you used to know everything by heart. What if you went on stage and played piano 
and sang this song and everyone was like, oh my God, she can sing and play piano. That's so cool. And then what would it feel? So then I sing along in the car, imagining that I'm on stage doing it or something. So I don't know if that's an internal monologue. It's definitely a sad fantasy. It's definitely embarrassing, but I don't know if that's an internal monologue. Um, so anyway, I'd love to hear from you guys. Like, what do you think about when you're just wandering around? And when is your mind the most quiet? Uh, that's what I would like to know. So what are we going to talk about today? Oh, oh yeah. My, I'm gaining weight. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. I don't want to hear you look great for I'm 10 pounds over my normal weight. I cannot fit into any of my clothes. None of my clothes that I wear on stage. They are beautiful, expensive clothes. I am a certain size. I am now not that size. It's very frustrating. I don't like it. It's definitely not out of the blue. It was just like, I, ugh, I mean, nobody be a woman in their next life. I'm fucking serious. So it's like, I'm on the birth control pill. Do I need to be? Am I going to get pregnant? No, I'm probably too old. But I'm on it because it's the one pill that's really good for adult cystic acne. And then I'm also on spironolactone. So it makes me crazy whenever it's like, you have such good skin. I use filters. I mean, my skin is nice, but... And I haven't had adult acne in forever since I've been on this combo of pills. But then one day my gynecologist was like, you should do this other brand of that same brand because it'll like... I don't know. It's like it doesn't have all the mood swings during PMS. I'm like, that sounds great. I totally forgot. Jen, you're on the one pill that deals with cystic acne. So uh, I broke out and then I came back. So I went back on the pill. So I think when you shift your hormones, it makes you gain weight because your body's like, I'm in shock. And then I've been doing a lot of sitting because I have a writing job. And even though I like might get up at 630 in the morning and hike for like 70 minutes, it's just my lifestyle is off. And when you work in a writer's room, they deliver food every day from a restaurant. So I wouldn't normally eat one restaurant meal a day. That's crazy. You know, even if you get a salad, like there's just something about, I swear to God, the minute even a piece of lettuce is inside of a restaurant, it has 500 calories. Even if you put nothing on it, it's just like, I, I don't know. So the only time my weight is where I want it is when every time I go to Australia, everything clears up. And I'm not going to Australia anytime soon. I was offered a great offer to do the Melbourne Festival this year. But I would have had to go for a month in April. And I was on a job that might get extended. And I couldn't risk not earning money, you know. Um, and, but when you go, like, for some, all right. So, for some reason, whenever I go there, and I don't even work out when I'm there because, I, I never find the classes I want to take and I just walk a lot or whatever. I don't know what it is. Like I eat less when I'm on the road. I'm just, I'm happy. Like I swear to God, it's not mood happy or depression happy, but there's a body happy. There's a happiness in my, all right, this is what I want to know. Are there any doctors out there? There's a happiness in my body where when I'm happy in a, in a way that's like, oh, my soul is doing what it wants to do for a living and my body feels like it's free of all restrictions. Like you don't have to sit in a writer's room all day or you don't have to do this all day. Like when my body can just do what it wants and I don't mean like get up and stretch. I mean, when it can just be out in the world the way it wants to be, I swear to God, like I can eat whatever I want. My weight's perfect. Everything's fine. My skin's good. And that's why when people are always like, I worry about you travel so much on the road. I'm like, I'm never healthier than when I travel. It agrees with me. I'm so good at it. I'm not good at staying in one place. So is there a thing where it's like when you're happy, your weight is regulated? It must be because the stress, the stress hormone, cortisol. And um, anyway, my point is my rotator cuff is fucked up. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a baseball player. Why do I have a, a a fucked up rotator cuff. I have no idea. But all of this just makes me sometimes, you know, when, when you're like just bummed about something that you're like, is this ever going to get better? It's like, you know what I want to do? I just want to go to bed. <laughs> that's, that's what I do when I'm just like, ugh, we'll start again tomorrow. Um, but I'm loving going to bed lately because I have attitude sheets. They're soft as silk, breathable as linen, but at the price of cotton. You're going to love them. I promise you guys. 
When you support my sponsors, you support my show. And right now, my listeners will get 20% off of their sheet set and free shipping. Just text Jen to 64,000. Now, they told me I must read it as 64,000, but it's stressing me out because it says here, text Jen to 64-000. So I'm saying it both ways because I'm neurotic. The only way to get 20% off of your attitude sheets and free shipping, text Jen to 64,000. Now here's the deal. I get hot at night when I sleep. My sheets have to be breathable. They have to keep me cool. And that's what I love about attitude because they use something called clean bamboo. It's the third generation of bamboo bedding technology. The sheets are feathery soft and they're beautiful. Like forget Egyptian count, cotton sheets like we're done with that this is next level this is next level so if you want to get the best sleep of your life you've got to try attitude sheets they're feathery soft they feel like you're being cocooned by a bunch of kittens or puppies or whatever you like they literally make your cotton sheets feel like sandpaper i'm not i'm not kidding it's clean bamboo which is cooling because it's breathable it regulates your temperature which duh improves the quality of your sleep. A lot of people are like, my skin's getting better after switching to Etitude because it's an antimicrobial as well. And it's better for the environment. So organic clean bamboo recycles 98% of the water it uses. So it is the most sustainable bedding available. Cotton, that uses a lot of pesticides and waste water and it's harmful on the environment. So Etitude, if you haven't figured out already, stands for Eco Attitude. So why not? They're amazing sheets with a 30-day risk-free trial. If you're not fully satisfied, you can return them for a full refund. They even cover shipping on return. So you legit have nothing to lose. 100% organic bamboo, non-toxic manufacturing process, hypoallergenic. I mean, let's just do this. Let's let's just stop right now. Free shipping. Text Jen to 64,000 and get 20% off of your attitude sheets and free shipping. So yeah, my, my rotator cuff. So I do these exercises. I know some of you have been like, I love your arms. Well, now you don't because I haven't been able to do them. But like they're those kind of micro movements. And I put, I put these weights. They're like bracelets around my wrist. They're just one pound. But then I also hold a pound. But then I do. See, again, you've got to get the live video feed of having boneless. It's only five bucks. You see me doing my exercises. You, you do your arms like this and like that. And it, they use their own weight. And you get those nice lean arms. Well, anyway, I've been doing them every day and I always have been doing them every day, but maybe this is what did it. I put, I woke up the next day or one day and I could not move my arm. I couldn't move it up. I couldn't move it to the side. I certainly couldn't wrap it around my back to put my bra on. I was like, ah, ah, it was totally scary, but I've had this happen before. And I know that it's the rotator cuff. So years ago I had the same issue, but I wasn't doing those micro arm movements, so I don't know where it came from last time, except I think it was when I was in Sweden. I remember this happening as clear as day. I was at the airport and I pulled my suitcase off of the little thing that goes around carousel. And I swear to God, I heard something, just something in my shoulder. And then after that, I just like couldn't move my arm certain ways. And I was like, whatever. So I just won't move my arm that way. Who am I to need a fully functioning arm? And uh, then it got worse, and then I went to a doctor, and uh, my chiropractor, and then I did physical therapy, and then they recommended a, whatever kind of doctor looks at your rotator cuff. And that guy was like, oh, you're going to have to have surgery. We're doing the MRI. You need surgery. It's torn. And I was like, I don't, he's like, I work with all the biggest baseball players. I'm like, that's great, but I'm not a baseball player. So, like, if I were, and I'm like, my career depends on this, doc. I got to do a home run this year in the World Series. <laughs> That's how baseball players talk. I should write a sports movie. I've got to do a home run this year in the World Series. You mean you've got to hit a home run? That's right. Are you in the World Series? No, we're not even in the playoffs, but listen, I got to do a home run in the World Series. Um, that's my sports movie. So, you know, but I'm, I just said, I don't think there's no way that I have a rotator cuff on my left arm, by the way, which is not my dominant arm. I don't even do anything with my left arm. So I've got a torn rotator cuff. You think the same way that a baseball player does? Like, 
no, I don't. I don't need surgery. And I was like, I have to go to Australia in two days. And he was like, I wouldn't both, I would cancel that trip or you're going to injure yourself for life. And I was like, well, I'll just see how I feel. I literally, literally got on the plane, got off the plane a day later, <laughs> went to my hotel. I was unpacking and I went, hey, wait, my arm's moving. My mouth's bleeding, Bert. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful life. I was like, Flying to Australia, I swear to God, the minute I get down there, I never look better. The weight comes off. My arms move again. It's like I'm meant to be there. And I've always thought that since I started going to Australia. But now it's just been so long since I've been. It's really hard to explain. I can't afford to go on my own tour there. Going through the festival, they pay the flight. You get a per diem, which means cash every day. They pay for your apartment. They pay for all your publicity. They get You don't pay anything and you make money on top of it. That's the only way to do that kind of tour if I was big and famous and could charge y'all 50 bucks a ticket and sell out in advance a thousand seats well yeah of course I'd come but I'm not coming to do a 200 seat theater and pay 10 grand to do it you know so um I could tell 10 friends you should come so anyway it's like the the rotator cuff is torn again and I'm like you know what I'm like gaining weight I'm like puff my guff here I don't like it my clothes don't fit I feel unhappy the skin's breaking out. My arm won't move. I got to go to Australia. You know, I've got to just, it's because I'm sitting too much. It's making me crazy. Sitting's worse for you than smoking. I got to start smoking again. There's just something going on. And this happens every year. Maybe it's Pisces season. I don't know. But every time, like right around this time of year, and then it happens again a few weeks before my birthday, I become an adolescent. Like the weight's going nuts. My skin's going nuts. And I'm just like, I don't like myself. And it's only for a few weeks. And it's always February and it's always August. So is there a doctor in the house? Is there an astrologist in the house? Can someone explain this to me? Now I know people don't believe in astrology and this really good friend of mine, we always have like a back and forth about it. And I'm like, I don't care if it's proven not real. How could the stars not affect us? He's like, cause they're not close enough. Like gravity affects us, but they don't. I'm like, I don't care. Let me believe it's fun. It's fun to get my chart read. It's fun to look at my horoscope and go, but that literally, like, why are all Virgos, you can tell, like, I could, why are we all the same? Anyway, if there's a doctor in the house, if there's an astrologist in the house, why every February and August do I feel like I'm going through a second adolescence? Why? Oh, I'm so afraid this is like midlife hormones and I'm just going to not be at my ideal weight. And I'm like lazy. I won't diet. I'll exercise, but I actually find people who diet and exercise, like, I'll tell you an example of when I lost weight. I had had sinus surgery two years ago and I laid on the couch and could only eat like 400 calories a day, like applesauce and stuff. And then, but I wasn't working out at all. And I lost like eight pounds because it wasn't eating, but I also was burning no calories. But it's like, that makes me lose weight more than like eat smaller portions and exercise. When I do that, nothing changes. And if I do cardio, it gets even worse. So it's like, weirdly, the less I do, the more I lose weight. I need all these doctors to explain this to me. I seem fun at gmail.com. Of course, no doctor is going to write. It's just going to be someone with Google who's like, I looked it up. Well, I can look it up too. But if someone's listening, they're like, oh my God, this is what I study at school. This is my life's work is why this and all these things Jen said, I need to write her. That's who I'm, that's who I'm talking about. So I will say one other thing. I know it's not like, you know, advised, but sometimes a little retail therapy helps. You buy a new thing, you're like, I feel a little better. I feel a little cuter. And uh, as we get into spring, the snow is melting. Did it ever come? Um, you might want some new shoes. And sometimes that can make you feel good. I love Rothy's. Oh, I wish I had them on today. I would show you. I've got cutest little white canvas, like almost like a little booty sneaker. Um, so here's the deal. Rothy's, R-O-T-H-Y-S. Rothy's are the perfect everyday shoes for life on the go. They're stylish and comfortable. 
and they go with everything from yoga pants to dresses and skirts. They come in an ever-changing array of colors, prints, and patterns, and they're available in a range of styles like sneakers, loafers, points, and more. They launch new colors and patterns every few weeks, and they sell out constantly. So my favorite are the white little sneaker boots because they do look cool with everything, and I actually... Now that I think about it, can wear them with the skirt I have, but it's just not that kind of weather yet, even in LA. So they're seamlessly knit. They're made from plastic water bottles. I Every time I hear this, it blows my mind because you could not tell. They do not look like plastic water bottles. Obviously, they look like really nice shoes. And uh, they're ultra comfortable. There is zero break-in period. Trust me, I walk a lot. Zero break-in period. They're the most comfortable sneakers I've ever had. They come with free shipping, free returns and exchanges, no risk, no worries, no reason not to try. So here's the deal. You're going to go to Rothy's, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com, and you're going to type in slash funlessness. I know that's a mouthful. Rothy's dot com, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash funlessness. Do I have to spell funlessness? F-U-N less ness. Two S's in each. Rothys.com slash funlessness to get your new favorite flats. Oh my God, comfort, style, sustainability. You've been waiting for them. So they're really made from repurposed water bottles. Rothys has diverted 35 million water bottles from landfills already. Amazing. They're fully machine washable. Throw them in to refresh. It's like getting a fresh new pair every day if you want. I mean, don't wash them every day. Come on, it's a little bit out of control. And what I love about them, they come in a box, duh, but like the shoe box is also the shipping box. So it's not double box stitch. Really, really cute. Anyway, go do it. Rothys.com slash funlessness. All right, folks. So yeah, so anyway, so I'm the rotator cuff thing. um, Last time I was in Australia, I had problems with it, but I had gone to acupuncture right before I left for the trip. And I was like, maybe that cleared it up. And, uh, you know, I go, I've been going every, for 12 years, once a week. And so uh, another comedian I knew, and, and, you know, unless they're my best friends, like most comedians are a chore to talk to. And every one of them runs a gamut left to right with all their conspiracy theories. We're a really annoying group of people. It comes out really well on stage, but in real life, you're like, oh God, here they go again. Here they go again about chemtrails. So anyway, walking with an acquaintance. And I was uh, doing something, I just kept, I kept testing my arm to see like, I can't believe the pain's not back. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I had this rotator cuff thing and they told me I needed surgery, but then I came down here and it got better. He's like, huh? I said, well, I mean, I went to acupuncture the day before, but, and he goes, oh, I don't believe in acupuncture, but please keep telling your story. I was like, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. And I've known this guy forever. He's fine. He's a little dinky do of a guy, sweet guy, whatever. But just like, shut the fuck up. I don't believe, it's not a belief. It's not a, it's not a ghost that you believe. It's a Chinese medicine. So you, what are you, racist? It's, it doesn't matter if you believe it. And I, I love on my acupuncturist website, um, he says, well, it doesn't matter if you believed it. It's been used, you know, in, for animals. My sister is an equestrian. Um, horses get acupuncture. I mean, now listen, there's the type of acupuncture that the needle goes right into your muscle and it does relax it because um, blood rushes to the surface and you know, it, that part, then there's, I guess, other kinds that this guy doesn't believe in where it's like, you put it, you put a needle somewhere and it's supposed to move energy around. Like, I don't know. I just uh, imagine, imagine, um, but this is what my acupuncturist says on his website. Um, Because he used to be in in the entertainment industry, and then he switched, and now he studies traditional Chinese medicine. So um, he says, I understand that many of the more typical love and light trappings of acupuncture might make some people uncomfortable as patients. That said, I absolutely believe in the power of this ancient medicine. I believe pain and disease are not inconveniences, but communication between your body and your brain. They are the body's way of signaling for help. Pills and injections often just silence that call. I believe, oh, obviously he believes in Western medicine as well. I believe that if the things that you are doing for your health are making you resentful of your health, that's bad medicine. I believe that 100% adherence to every you should is impossible and unhealthy and makes for a very boring life. 
health and medicine should be about electrifying the pursuit of living, not dampening it. So there you go. Um, one of the things is to, uh, is it weird to stick needles in your body for health and serenity? He writes, sure, it's really weird. I'm the first to admit it. However, the fact that it has been treating patients on nearly every continent for at least 4,000 years compared to Western medicine's 100 years speaks to its efficacy. Again, I'm getting the full-blown chemo if I get cancer. No one's saying replace, saying I use it as a balance when I'm healthy. Does that make sense? Um, while acupuncture can be incredibly effective at treating symptoms, the ideal acupuncture patient actually has no symptoms and wants to stay that way. The gist of it is energy or key, if you like, um, or it's not pronounced key. Oh my God, what's wrong with me? I know this, but it doesn't matter. I'm having a senior moment. You guys, I'm so stressed. I'm working 16 hour days and I just don't have much left. Um, it's constantly moving through the body. Blood is a thicker form of this energy. And when it circulates properly, we don't feel it. We are in harmony, balanced and strong, but when it gets blocked or becomes deficient, it causes pain, dysfunction, depression and disease. For example, pain is actually energy and blood that have stagnated. During treatment, when an acupuncture needle is inserted, the brain recognizes something is happening and sends blood to the insertion point to investigate, triggering the inflammatory response and hyper-circulating oxygen, minerals, and resources, both to the point of insertion and to other areas that may help the body recover. Acupuncture often requires patients to look at health from a new perspective. Many of us are used to Western medicine, which focuses on what's sick and broken on killing the pathogen. Western health is about getting us back to where we were before the bad thing happened. That's great and I'm thankful for it. However, health in Eastern medicine is about strengthening the body's natural intelligence so that it can employ its resources more effectively to encourage wellness, prevent illness, and put out its own fires. It's about improving basic life functions, circulating blood, calming the nervous system, and God, calming the nervous system is one of the most important things you can do for your immune system. Um, improving sleep and the digestive process, reducing stress. If our bodies are operating at peak potential, we shouldn't be sick, we shouldn't be in pain, and we shouldn't be agitated, tense, or cranky. Sounds good, right? Every now and then I come across someone who declares that they don't believe in acupuncture. While everyone is entitled to their opinion, I do like to remind these fun people that canine acupuncture has been repeatedly proven effective and none of the dogs claim they believe in it either. Fortunately for them, acupuncture doesn't require a puppy's belief. And fortunately for you and me, the World Health Organization lists the following symptoms, diseases, and conditions to be treated effectively by acupuncture. Arthritis, back pain, neck pain, muscle pain, muscle weakness, muscle cramping, sciatica, um, all of that has been helped for me with acupuncture, abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, ingestion, PMS, menopause symptoms, anxiety, depression, insomnia, nervousness, neurosis, on and on. Headaches, migraines, neurological, blah, blah, blah. So there you go. Oh, every once in a while, I swear, I swear to God, and it goes back to like what I was saying earlier about conversations in our brain. Every once in a while, I'm just sitting there going, that idiot that said, I have a, I have a, I don't believe in it. Like, who wants to talk to you? Like, that's not a, that's not a, oh God, who's texting me now? Um, oh my God, my friend is so far behind. Oh, honey. Oh, honey, you are so far from the thing. No, you are so far from the thing. I can't believe you're still on Jessica and Barnett. Um, I mean, again, the people who are paying the $5 thing, they get to see me texting a friend. You're still on Jessica with Barnett. Uh, uh, Oh, oh wait, you mean in Mexico. It gets even better. Okay. Yeah, Love is Blind. So I watched the finale 
you know, by the time this comes out, they'll already have had the reunion show, which I don't think I want to watch. I don't care. I realized with Love is Blind, what I loved was the uh, them getting to know each other behind the wall and then when they first meet and trying to make it work. But then once they got married, I was like, okay, some people got married. Like, great for your love. I get it. Like, that can happen. You know, it's like dating. It's like they chose to get married and they're getting to know each other in the first two years. And maybe that's a way to do it. A lot of people get married when they're like, I've been with them 10 years and I'm absolutely sure. Um, maybe the way to do it is the way they're doing it. I don't know. But then the other people, you're like, well, I knew you weren't going to last. And then some of the people. So how it works on Love is Blind is you get engaged after like six days. You get engaged before you see what the person looks like. Okay, so then you're in the relationship. And if you make it to the wedding day, when you get to the altar, that's when you're supposed to decide by saying I do or I don't. So some people might have had like the best date the night before with their fiance and they're like tomorrow we're getting married and it could end up when they're up there that one of them just flips out and goes I don't and then they're like don't talk to each other ever again and then that's it so the people that said I don't I wanted to see them download about it one couple tried to um but it didn't go that long like so they just separated and and go away like leave and I'm like well that the fact that someone just left someone at the altar I want to see the aftermath and they cut to like these people that are in love and getting married. I'm like, nah, ain't nobody want to see that. Give me the drama. So I don't know. I, I love the show. I'll watch season two. But I, I can tell you right now, there's something unsatisfying about the aftermath of the people who don't end up getting married. And I think if anyone out there is listening, I think you need to reconsider and let people talk to each other after they don't work out at the altar because that's what we're dying to see. And don't give us a reunion special. That's not what I want. I want in the moment, someone going, why did you do that? And someone else going, I thought I told, oh my God, how long have I been doing? Um, I had an appointment from 2.30 to 3.30. So I'm just about to get home. Um, but I'm in good shape. I just have to clean up, uh, about, um, and then go through again, go through again for, and then go through again, the whole thing. Um, how long have I been doing? Is it 50, 40, 30? I think it's only been 35 minutes, right? Are you there? Oh, it's like 35 minutes. Uh, 42 minutes. 42. Okay. I think we might, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm in the middle of a script. Um, uh, I have to be at work uh, tomorrow morning. I have about, if I want to go to bed at a decent hour, about, um, six hours left, uh, to get home and finish this. And my, um, writing partner's checking in on me. So, I got to bust out. I know this is a shorter episode, but for you Patreon people, you get extra stuff. For you non-people, like, look, 45 minutes of free excitement. We talked about acupuncture and uh, all, all kinds of things. So I'm sorry. This week's a little bit of a shorty McGordy. Um, I got to go. I got to go to work. And uh, okay, I guess that was it. Um, we run in short. If you buy tickets to my shows, hashtag Jen Kirkman 2020. And uh, see you out there until next week. Have fun. Okay, beep, 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 beep. I don't normally have all these plastic water balls, y'all. Just kind of one of those days where I went to different meetings and different things and people handed me water and I took it because I lost my big glass bottle. I left it at Pilates, um, so I have to go back and get it. But I haven't been back at Pilates because of the rotator cuff. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I hope you guys are enjoying the live video feed, the unedited. This is what it looks like. Beep, 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 beep. Okay.
Um, there's this. Put my coat on. I feel like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Well, you be my neighbor. Okay. Um, there's that. Put this in here. Okay, bitches. I'll see you next week. Have fun. Is that video still on? Because I'm talking to them like it is. And you might think I'm like totally insane. Is it still rolling? I said that we stopped. Oh, no, that's good. I was like talking to them I was, I was, yeah. as I was leaving. I was like, you must be like, she's, there's no one there. <laughs> no, no. I can hear what you were saying. That's so funny. Um, so what I'll do is email you all the descriptions like I normally do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll just email you about the next time I can come in. I'm so glad you banged out too, though. That's no, so helpful. Okay. And then you'll just put the video. What did we do last time? You just put it in the Dropbox, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, quick. Yeah, so I'll just do that again right now. Oh my God, you're the best. Thanks for putting up with my, um, I don't even know what. There was nothing.